mark is generally observed plastic part defect or the injection molding defect which plastic part design engineers and the mold design engineers needs to deal with. My name is Jagdish Atoe and in this video, I am providing you the detailed information about the sink bar. Do subscribe and press the bell icon so that you never miss any new learning video from the design gigs. Without any further delay, let's deep dive into the topic. Another defect which is very very important for the design engineers and that is sink mark. So here we will discuss about what is sink mark and what are the causes of the sink mark and what are the remedies for the sink marks and how we can deal with the sink mark in the design. So what is the sink mark? Basically the sink mark is the area in a molded part which is deformed into the surface or the depression. In this image you can see the depressed area. Such depressions occur in the part if the part is having uneven thickness or the non-uniform thickness like this or if the part is having non-uniform thickness like this here the thickness is less and here in this area the thickness is more. So that part is having non-uniform thickness that leads to the sink mark on the part like this. So the surface depression or your sink is basically occur in the thicker section because of the non-uniform cooling. Your non-uniform thickness leads to the non-uniform cooling and that non-uniform cooling leads to the sink mark again. So basically this sink occurs in the part like this. This occurs in the thicker section. So this thicker sections or uneven thickness leads to the non-uniform cooling and that materials during the solidification and because of this non-uniform cooling it leads to the internal stresses in the part and that causes the part to sink or warp like this. So the sink marks potentially occurs in the areas like ribs, boss and uh, the areas of rapidly changing thickness or the large solid region. You can see in this image it is getting depressed. So if you design the ribs with the same thickness as your part thickness, then the local thickness at this base area will increase. During the solidifications, it will lead to the sink mark because it will cool unevenly because the material begins and uh, to cool and hardens with the mold and not all the areas will solidify or cool at the same rate means there is a non-uniform cooling and due to that temperature gradient of your molten region that still exists in, in the center like this and that leads to sink mark defect on the part. So this red indicates like this is a heated region and during the certifications it leads to the sink mark on the part. Here the surface is getting locally depressed and that we call as a sink mark. So this causes the outer surface to sink inside which creates the depression. The formation of sink mark may occur due to one or more factors including the material selection or processing method or the part geometry and the tooling design. So with the material selection, the sinkage rate or the sinkage percentage is different for the different different materials. Some materials sink more, some materials are having low sinkage percentage. So the material which we select for the part having the impact on the sinkage and the sink marks ultimately and sink marks occurs due to the processing parameters or the processing methods also like injection rate or the injection speed and some material temperature, melt temperature, mold temperature and the sink mark also occurs due to the improper design or the proper geometry. So if we design the part with the non-uniform thickness, the part geometry which like with the sudden shape change or if the part is not designed properly as per the DFM guidelines then the formation of the sink marks may occur on the part because of non-uniform thickness and if tooling design is not proper unbalanced cooling mechanism or improper vein design and some location that leads to the non-uniform solidification and ultimately the sink mark. As we discussed that sink marks are caused by localized sinkage of materials at the thicker section without sufficient compensation during the certification process. This occurs because of unbalanced heat removal or the similar factors. So the factor that leads to the sink marks are low injection and packing pressure, insufficient material compensation 
and the early gate freeze off or the low packing pressure may not pack or fill the cavity properly. And the third factor is the high volumetric shrinkage, which is different for different materials. That means different materials are having different shrinkage rate. And because of that, it leads to the sink mark on the part, depending on what material we are using for the production or the part manufacturing. And the sink marks are occurs due to the high melt temperature or mold temperature. And it also occurs because of some localized geometric features like the reefs or bosses or some uh, internal radius areas if the features are not designed as per the standard guidelines or as per the DFM guidelines and that shrinkage pulls the part geometry uh, inwards causing the depressions of the sink marks on the part. So if your part is having non-uniform thickness that leads to the sink mark on the part which is where the surface will get depressed. If the surface layer is hard enough or if have the proper cooling system for this surface then instead of sink marks you may get the vacuum void so this is sink mark or void let's discuss what are the remedies that we can have for this sink marks your sink marks can be avoided or it can be reduced by changing some combinations of the mold design and the molding conditions under which the part is molded and we can modify the part geometry. So with these three ways, we can take the remedial actions. Altering mold design means increasing the gate size or arena size to fill the cavity in a short time. And to delay the gate freeze off time or increasing the gate and arena size, which allows the more material to be packed into the cavity. So by modifying the runner and the gate system, we can eliminate the sink marks. If you increase the runner dimension or the gate dimension or if you use the multiple gate so that like it will fill the molten cavity faster in a sh uh, short time. And by having some proper cooling system, we can mitigate this sink mark defect. The second thing is like relocating the gate uh, to near or the thicker sections. So this allows that material to be packed into the mold before the thinner section frees off. So if we are having the non-uniform thickness of the part like this, it is recommended to place the gate near thicker section and putting it on the thinner section. That allows your material to be packed into the mold before the thinner section frees off. The third remedy is regarding the mold design is like giving the proper ventilation so that the material inside the mold will cool uniformly because your sink marks can occur because of the non-uniform cooling. So proper cooling is very important and proper ventilation also allows to escape the air which is trapped inside the cavity. So by providing the proper venting system also we can mitigate this uh, sink mark defect. Another way is adjust the molding conditions and that includes your increasing the injection pressures and your holding time. So by increasing the injection pressure it helps to fill the mold properly and increase the holding time help you to settle the materials inside the cavity and cool properly and we can reduce that sink mark by optimizing your packing profile in the molding conditions as your sink mask occurs during the packing stage or you can say the during solidification phase so the most effective way is to reduce or eliminate them is to control the packing profile or you can say the packing pressure correctly and the third way which is like modifying the part geometry so by adding the features like reeves or corrugations or some fillets we can eliminate the sink mark we can add these kind of a stiffening profile and we can mitigate that and the second is to modify the part thickness to minimize the thickness variation if we are having the low thickness here and the high thickness here how we can maintain the uniform thickness we can maintain that by removing the material we can remove the material like this consider the fillet here it should be refilleted otherwise we will we'll get the other defects because of the sharp corner or we can remove the material from this side also that way also we can maintain the uniform thickness how we can deal with the sink marks with the design parameters for a rib specifically so for our consideration let's take the base thickness of the part like nominal wall thickness so here w is denoting the nominal wall thickness of the part this is the rib thickness at the base which is 40 to 60 percent of the nominal wall thickness because the thinner rib it does not provide much stiffness and may hard to fill during the complete filling and on the other hand thicker rib can introduce the sink marks on the surface so keep the rib base thickness as 40 to 60% of the nominal wall thickness and that's the guideline for the rib base thickness. The next is 
rib height for maximum effectiveness the rib height should not be more than three times than the nominal wall thickness the taller ribs can significantly increase the rib strength but unfortunately the taller ribs are difficult to mold since the rib will be thinner than the wall and it may be hard to fill if it is a taller one so your rib height should not be more than three times the nominal wall thickness then next is your rib spacing if you are using consecutive ribs on the part for the strengthening application so the minimum distance between two ribs should be two times the nominal wall thickness that is the minimum maximum can be anything depending on the load applications then the drop or the easy ejection of the part from the mold so generally we give the rib with the drop as 0.5 degree to 1 degree minimum 0.5 is necessary it will vary from 0.5 degree to 1 degree then rib radius we provide the rib radius at this to avoid the stress concentration if you are having this as a sharp edge at this level without the fillet then definitely during the applications or because of the stress it will have the highest stress concentration because of the sharp edge and that leads to the failure of the rib there during the working so to avoid that stress concentration or to disturb that stress concentration we need to provide the rib radius and that the rib radius should be minimum 25% of the nominal wall thickness if we go on increasing this radius here at the base instead of this 25% if you go on like 50 60 or 70 then the local thickness here will increase and again that leads to the sink mark like if you increase this rib radius then definitely it will lead to the sink mark on the part on the other side that's why your rib radius should be minimum 25% and maximum 50% of the nominal wall thickness. It should not be more than that. So, how we can deal with the zinc mark in the design like by, let's say, the rib coring or by material removal. As we discussed in the last slide that like we can remove the material, excess material to maintain the uniform thickness. So, the rib coring is the one way to maintain the uniform thickness to deal with the sink mark in the design. If you are having this part which is having the thicker section at this base of the rib, so that is the thick wall, we can core it out like this and we can maintain the uniform thickness by coring out. Now, if we are having this part which is having the non uniform thickness, here the thickness is less and in this area the thickness is more. So, how we can mitigate that to avoid the sink mark? Now here we are having the higher thickness in this area. To maintain the uniform thickness what we can do here for example we can go from this we can like this and then we can go for this configuration. We can remove this material from this side and we can get the uniform thickness. But what if the customers or if the part of application requirement is to have this surface to be flat then in that cases we need to remove the material from the other side how we can remove the materials to get the highest strength also that also we need to look for for example like this for this region we can go for this configuration so with that configuration we can go for adding or creating the rib structure like this and at the same time we are able to remove the more materials and we can save on the material cost and the part weight we can reduce the part weight and at the same time we will get the higher strength in by this configurations as compared to this one so this way we can deal the sink mark with the design parameters there are other methods also to reduce the sink marks like uh, material displacement method or the heat removal technique and in, in material displacement method we reduce the sink mark by adding or removing the materials means pouring out the part in an area where the sink mark is likely to occur to maintain the uniform thickness where the sink mark may occur and in heat removal technique is like pulling the heat away from area where the sink is likely to occur or we can say that like to maintain the uniform cooling there so we can have the proper cooling uh, with the mold design there reducing the chance of differential cooling or uneven cooling between the thin and the thick areas but remember one thing solving one problem can often introduce the other problem so each option requires the considerations of all the relevant aspects of mold design and the feature specification so hope you get the idea about sink mark and its causes and the remedies of sink mark